hey guys so today we are going to talk about the failover scenarios uh, uh, using the IPSLA and uh, what are the tracks uh, we can implement in the IPSLA and uh, what is there a way we can do the conditional track like we call it as a boolean so how we are going to use a boolean in that case so yes so let's start the IPSLA so in our data center we must have seen that uh, we have uh, two routers suppose the R1 this is the R1 and this is the R2 which connects a service provider so if it is connecting to the AT&T and this is connecting to the Sprint and on the downstream side we are connecting to the switch and these are our users connected here from the switch the LAN environment and this is going to be our primary router and this is going to be a secondary link and we have uh, suppose if we have the BGP pairing with this C route uh, C router with the P router and another pairing here as well so the traffic is going from R1 to the AT&T to across the MPLS network we have and uh, the secondary is going again from this way as well so the primary routes are going through to the AT&T but in, in some of the scenarios suppose uh, if the neighbor is going down then failover do not happen manually so in the BGP we have some attributes that we can use which is the AS prepend and all of that but uh, if we do not want to modify anything on the router uh, on the routing site so we also have a way to which we uh, which is going to send the keep alive uh, 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 keep alive messages from the r1 router to the uh, to the at&t router and uh, <coughs> so that way we can also verify the connectivity of the bgp now suppose yes if we can verify the neighborship connectivity if it is up but still we are not receiving the routes so what so what are the scenarios so this is this is van failure somewhere in the AT&T network because if this is a AT&T network and this is my uh, this is my CE router correct and this CE router must be connecting somewhere in the AT&T MPLS right so these are all routers connecting to one another and now if I have I would be receiving any of the routes but uh, uh, it is it might be coming on the C, it might not be coming on the C because we don't have access to it, but we are not receiving on the P side, the provider side, the where we are sitting. So we are not receiving on the R1 those routes. So we have to also verify that uh, these the when whenever we form the neighborship with the BGP, so every time so the routes that we want to have are entering to R1 to the routing table so that our users can access the route and go out of the network. So here we are going to talk about uh, uh, the BGP pairing and as well as uh, we are going to verify the routes using the IPSLA. So I am using the EVE platform to simulate the lab and uh, this is the this is the topology I <coughs> have built and here I going to talk about the IPSLA. So there are the four routers and all those all four routers are connected uh, through the MP, uh, uh, OSPF area zero because we have we have we need to have to have the connectivity between them and then these two routers are having are running the BGP so these are the IBGP pairs so uh, the R1 is connecting R1 is connecting with the R3 at the bottom and the R2 is connecting to the R4 at the bottom okay <clears throat> and the uh, you know the the subnets in green are my uh, are my this is my AT&T suppose these are my AT&T routes and uh, this is my sprint routes so I am impl uh, so I have uh, uh, I have I, I will be using these network in the router one and these red network in the router two right so I will be showing you the config of R3. <clears throat> so 
so r3 connects to the r1 and the r4 okay so as i said that uh, this is a ibgp pair with the r1 and we are receiving these routes from the r1 so all these routes we are receiving from the r1 and uh, <clears throat> these are the routes we are learning from the r2 okay and i think i am missing two more routes <clears throat> that are not being advertised from the r2 so let me just quickly advertise these as well <clears throat> these are being advertised but we are not learning in the routing table <clears throat> show ip route we are learning here as well okay but we are not learning on the r3 Hmm. Show IP route. Let's try to <clears throat> ping the network that we want to reach. So we have routes, but not showing in the routing table. So let's, let's just try to ping. We have seen the routes. Let's just ping this. This is reachable. This is also reachable. So never mind. I think uh, so. This is because I am using the Cisco image. I actually I uh, I had uh, I had encountered with similar kind of issue in the past as well. So I am ignoring this thing and moving on with what we want to achieve with the IPSLA. So my uh, my motive right now is to have the connectivity between all all four routers and to advertise some of the routes in this network with connecting with the r1 and some of the networks with the r2 okay and we are learning all those routes in the r3 and the r4 right now let, let me show you the config for the ipsla and what what we have implement for the ipsla so ipsla we need to we cannot do anything on the on the c side the provider side what we can do sorry uh, on the p side so whatever we can do on the uh, customer edge router so this is my edge router and uh, <clears throat> let's see what's the config we have for the r3 this is r2 okay run section SLA so in the so this is the IP SLA that I have configured on the router R3 what is saying so it is saying I am configuring the IP SLA 1 and I am going to monitor the uh, neighbor which is sitting on the IP address 192.168.4.1 let's see this if the neighbor is correct yeah so we can see the neighbor is 192.168.4.1 and uh, i will be using the ethernet 0 slash 0 so which is my uh, the uh, the interface which is connecting with the provider and i can also see that i i am receiving the four prefix from my neighbor so show run section bgp okay so one neighbor is configured which is uh, connecting to the if this is going to be the at and then yes this is the at and router and uh, we are learning uh, for prefix show ip bgp okay we are learning for prefix now <coughs> show run section sla so this is uh, this is my uh, IPSLA config starts from here to the here 
so this is uh, the sequence number we can use any of the sequence number for the ipsla this is my uh, eco icmp uh, the, so this is one of the command that i want to issue from the router r3 i can also use a tcp connect and other uh, commands as well so if you want to see like what we can configure more on it so ipsla1 and uh, uh, okay that's already running it cannot be modified so let me just take an example for two and let's see what we can configure so we can configure uh, the icmp eco uh, the mpls the tcp eco tcp connect so mostly in most of the cases that depends upon the scenarios so uh, if you are running uh, an application then you can uh, uh, so any application then you can use the ports according whatever uh, the options we have in the ipsla okay so we can use a tcp connect if we want to verify any tcp port and if we are using any voice over i uh, voice over ip connectivity then we can also verify that and if we can also verify the jitter the latency we have on the on the link but my this time my motive is just to verify that my neighbor is up or not right so i am just going to use the icmp echo and this is destination ip host ip so in this case my uh, neighbor ip is 192.168.4.1 192.168.4.1 okay now i can i have two options that i can use the source ip the source ip can be any of the ip configured on the interfaces of r3 and source interface can any of the up interface we have on the router r3 so in this case we have uh, we are using the uh, source interface and the source interface we have ethernet 0 slash 0 so this is my uh, this is my one of the command that we use in the ipsla which is going to monitor sending the uh, keep alive the icmp uh, icmp um, uh, messages to the my peer and uh, if the echo is coming back then it is good right now it is asking me if uh, i want to set the frequency so what is going to be the frequency uh, when it is going to send the probe the icmp probe so if i am going to set the 10 seconds so these units and uh, the frequency is in seconds and then the time out is in milliseconds so time out is i am also going to configure the 10 10 milliseconds 10 seconds sorry so 10 seconds now uh, I want to start this SLA. So if I want to start this SLA, then IP SLA schedule. And this is the, the because this is going to be the number two because the IP SLA we configured. So the, um, the process number for the IP SLA, it was two. Okay. And then uh, the start time. So let's, let's just fix the life. So uh, the life is going to be the forever and it is going to start now. Okay, exit. <clears throat> Show IP SLA summary. So here we can see it was my previously configured IP SLA. And now I have just configured the another IP SLA, which is this one. And this is also monitoring the same interface uh sla so this is my new config for the sla2 and this sla2 is very similar with the sla1 uh, just in that i think i i did i missed that timeout so here i have also configured that timeout command for that so now now i will be calling these ip sla in some tracks so let's just first see the config of track So this is uh, the ISLA that I configured. The one is going is uh, is being called in the track one, and uh, less uh, I have to configure the SLA two in track two, but I am already using the track two for verifying the route. So this is my second thing that I am going to discuss now. So we can also uh, monitor the uh, routes. 
that we are receiving form from the peer and that should be there in the bgt pay table so the main motive of this uh, using the track to ip route is means so whatever the routes we are receiving in the uh, routing table that we can use here because if uh, we don't have any route and this is because if we are learning many of the routes from the BGP, but the best in the specific route and the best valid route are going to be installed in the routing table. So uh, we need to keep in mind that whatever the routes we are receiving are not the one we should put here because uh, this track always look in the routing table. So we need to take care that whatever we are going to put here should be there in the routing table. So 1.1.1.0 we are receiving, we are learning it from the uh, from our neighbor and this is there in the routing table. So show IP route. Yeah, so this is we are learning from the BGP here. We can see this is learning from the BGP and this is there in the routing table. This is the best valid route we have. Okay, so this is how we configure the route uh, reachability and uh, this <clears throat> this confirms us that uh, if uh, we are not receiving route, the track will go down and uh, let's see what will happen then. So I would be so let's just configure the track track for IPSLA2 okay track so I am already using the one two four let's just go with the three IPSLA and two hit enter and the track is configured for the neighbor okay and we already have configured the route if you want to see let me just show you uh, the this as well so suppose if I want to configure the route so this is a command for this and whatever the prefix you want to use with the network mask you can put here okay so and suppose if this is going to be the 1.1.2.0 slash 255 255 255 0 and this is going to be to verify the route metric and to verify the reachability state so if i want to just verify the reachability then let's click this and this is turn route track 5 is configured which is monitoring uh, this particular network so just go through the track config again okay so the track one track two track three the newly configured sla sla2 is being called in the track three and this is one of the you know the best operation the best implementation we have in the ipsls so what it is doing it will be calling these tracks so because if i talk about talk about the previously configured uh, tracks so one and the two i configured earlier and then i called in the object one and the object two so the object one resembles the track one and the object two resembles the track two okay and i am using the end operation here so what tells what what it tells me so the end operation is telling me that uh, uh, if both the objects are up then the list will be up and if any of the object is going down the reachability is going down for any of the object that means for any of the tracks then the list will be go down and the failover will happen okay so let's just verify show uh, show ip summary uh, ip sls summary okay so this is a command to verify that yeah the state is the written code is okay okay and the rtt time is one second and the last run on the eight second and the four seconds show track brief so these all are the tracks we have configured on this router so the sla1 sla2 and these are the route sla's and this is a list track we have now what i am going to show you now the ethernet config for the hsrp sorry zero two okay 
so uh, normally what happens that we should have uh, some layer 3 switch connecting here and these routers would be going to these connecting to these switches and uh, uh, so on that on uh, and the interface that is connecting to that switch uh, should be should have the config for the uh, for the HSRP and for the tracks. So the tracks and the IPSLA are always called in the HSRP and some of the redundant protocols we have HSRP, B, uh, GBLP and VRRP. So here I am you already implemented and we are using the HSRP. So the HSRP we are calling it and this is so for the HSRP if you want to learn then I think I can make the another video for that but uh, here I am uh, main I have main focus on the uh, SLA and the failover mechanism using the IPSLA. So uh, this is my uh, the track uh, standby one so the one the HSRP number and this is my track 4 the track 4 is uh, the list if if you would remember because this is the track 4 is the list and I am decrementing it by the 50 okay so and we already know that the list uh, has uh, two conditions so that it includes the track 1 and the track 2 so in the track 1 it is monitoring the uh, BGP neighbor and in the track 2 it is verifying the routes we are receiving from the BGP is there in the routing table on the not okay so if the both condition are good if both are up both tracks are up then the list will be up and all good if any of the one is going down then the list will go down and the failover will happen okay now i am going to show you the failover that it's hap is happening or not so i will be just sh showing you whenever the BGP neighbor is going down. So we can see the R3 is currently the active uh, router. Okay, because uh, uh, we have uh, we have set the priority here. So this is using the priority 110. So that is why this is the active router. And uh, what is going to happen now? Because uh, I have configured the the IPSLA with some decrement. Show run. So I have configured the track with some decrement, which is a 50. So if if this track is going down, then the, the the priority will be going to decrease by 50 from the value 110, and which is the least value from the secondary priority. So which should be sitting on the 100. So this router will become the secondary, and, uh, and the R4 will become the primary. So let's let's just shut down this interface on R1 okay config T interface ethernet 0 slash 1 shut now the neighbor is down for me OSPF is down interface is down okay track start tracking it it it, it is taking effect and the SLA 1 is down the complete list is down okay and the HSRP changing it from the active to speak and speak to the standby and the track yeah okay the SLA state is down the track 2 is and uh, the SLA 2 is also down SLA 1 is down list is down and the <coughs> HSRP is going to the standby and declared the BGP to down show standby this is my standby router now show IP route never mind this is a problem of this image because it is still showing me that these routes are up because if you try to ping the 1.1.1.1 you will not receive any response in that because uh, cannot say about this image this is 
the simulator I am using not on the real production or the real devices it can happen so all these routes are down if you try to see 2.1.1.1 yeah this is reachable but this particular network is down for me so the failover is happening we can see this uh, this is this has become the standby and the r4 has become the primary and uh, let me just bring that interface up okay okay bgp neighbor is done it is up the track sla1 is up the list is up hsrp has taken effect it has become the primary router now it has become a show ip route ping 1.1.1 .1 .1. So now we have verified the neighbor when we are shutting down the interface or the neighbor is going down because any of the reasons if the cable is broken, if the uh, if the service provider is doing some changes on the router, if there is any effect on the neighbor. Uh, so uh, we, since we are tracking it from our side, so we can verify that and uh, we, we can decide, we can make the decision based upon uh, uh if uh, this particular neighbor is going down now let's see that uh, if a particular route we are we are tracking is not receiving on our side then what happens in that case so if i am tracking here show run section track so i am tracking these two interfaces uh, so these two tracks <coughs> so the track one and that so because i i have not configured this track on the interface uh, and track 5 because if you see show run interface ethernet 0 slash 2 so I am just calling the track 4 track 4 involves the object 1 object 2 and this particular track is in effect right now so I am going to remove this route and we will see that uh, is there any effect on the failover or not okay this has been removed let's see if there if anything happens now yeah so track 2 down list went down hsrp going to speak and then going on the standby bgp neighbor is going down I knew this okay at least yeah now on this router this is good it is reflecting that particular route is not here Sh show PGP summary this is this is again the yeah okay so we can see that we are receiving the three prefix so we have implemented but show standby this has become the standby because the route is not available in my routing table so that is why it has uh, taken the failover from r3 to the r4 so that is how the ipsla works uh, that is how uh, that we can we can use the optimum use of the tracks so how we would use the boolean operation where uh, we have the we have the option because here I am using the end operation, we can also use the OR operation depending upon the requirement. So, um, so this is how we can make the effective failover mechanism in our in our environment and uh, can do the failover 
based upon the uh, decision and the results we can see from the track so that's all from my side if you have any questions and uh, if you are doing in your environment and uh, if you are doing on your lab so if you have any queries then please post a command i would be happy to reply on that okay thank you goodbye